Hey, good morning guys and welcome back to Mini Urban Farm. This morning I am taking you with me on my morning garden routine. But first, coffee. All right, so I walk the garden every single morning. Um, it's the first thing I do right when I wake up. I am still in my pajamas. If you can see here, I just put on my gardening shoes and then I go straight outside. So every morning I come out here and I walk the garden. Um, I just make sure that everything is, you know, not dying, looking okay, basically. One of the very first things I do is I check the irrigation system. Um, it looks like it poured last night, so everything is still really wet. You can see the raindrops here. Now it is currently set to auto. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. Whenever it poured the night before, then I always go ahead and just make sure it is off so that it's not, you know, oversaturating the garden and creating a whole bunch of other problems. All right, so the next thing I do is come in here in the raised beds and just make sure that everything is kind of trellised properly. Um, you can see these ones aren't exactly on the trellis, um, but they're not long enough yet to, to have to go and tie them up. So they're pretty sturdy still. I do notice though in this bed that we have a whole bunch of vines um, that should be trellised here on the top, but they're not, they're caving over. So then I just go ahead and trellis them up. Um, anything that is really fast growing, like these are pole beans, right? They grow really fast. And I haven't done this in a couple of days because it's been pouring every single day in the morning. Um, I'm just gonna come up here and make sure that everything is trellised to the top. All right, so that's really important because if you wait too long to trellis things that grow really fast like pole beans, then you're gonna end up with like vines that are intertwined and matted everywhere. Um, and I'll show you a piece of that, you know, just things that get like really heavy um, matted together and then it's really, really hard to get crops out of them because they don't let the light in. You can see here they already started to like twine themselves together. Um, now this isn't that bad, but remember when they start growing all of these leaves, then it's gonna be really, really matted. So one thing that I do sometimes is I just prune these back and I'll just continue to tie these up. Um, this one shouldn't be that big of a deal. Another thing that you wanna do is look for signs of disease and pest. Um, you can see this is starting to get a little bit of blight and that's really not in my control right now because it has been because it has been pouring rain, so there's going to be a little bit of that. Um, nothing I can do really because I don't have a cover over this. This is just um, open gardening space. So you can see that it has started, but I'm gonna provide less water and just make sure that all of these things are trellised up as much as possible so they're not touching um, the bottom of the soil and then getting all of that nasty disease on it. All right, so I do that for every single one of my raised beds. It usually doesn't take that long, just a few minutes each. Um, and then if there's anything to harvest, like little peppers here or anything, I go ahead and pull those. I usually have my little harvest basket with me. You can see that this one is still a tiny bit green here. Um, so then I'm gonna go ahead and leave this so that it ripens better on the vine. But I did see a pepper over here in this bed. Um, and these are cayenne peppers. Those were sweet lesia peppers. This one is ready to go. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull that off. All right, and then this one also is a little bit green, so I will just leave them on because peppers, you really wanna leave them to get mature on the plants. But I did see some tomatoes over here that were ready to be harvested. And oh my God, you guys, this is one of my favorite reasons why I like morning garden walks instead of late evening garden walks. All of the flowers are out, look at this. And you can see that we do have a whole bunch of little baby okra growing over here. Um, this one is too small to pick right now. I'm gonna let it get just a tiny bit bigger. And you can see we have some over here as well. I'm gonna let them just get a tiny bit bigger. Now this, this one I could probably pick, um, but I don't wanna have just one. So I'm gonna let it go for now so that I can have a whole bunch of them. Now I am seeing that there is something eating these okra leaves. Um, this is probably some of the caterpillars that we've had and I have tried to do a little bit of organic pest control for the caterpillars um, It seems like the wasps that we have have been taking care of them pretty nicely because since I saw all the wasps coming into the garden I have seen significantly less of those caterpillars and armyworms um, But for right now, you know, I'll just leave this alone and let nature do its thing Now I'm seeing a few tomatoes in here and there's like some sticky spider webs over here. I think there's a whole bunch of spiders that made their webs like in between the little um, Florida weave thing I have going on here. 
but over here you can see that I have some tomatoes. Now this is not fully ripe, you can see it's just turning red, but I'm gonna go ahead and pick it anyway because what happened? Oh no, uh, it got to it anyway. Well, I was gonna say that what happens if I leave them on the vine too long is that the caterpillars and army worms, they will get inside of them, just like this one over here. I'm so sad right now. Oh my gosh. Guys, I have lost the majority of my um, my tomato crop to cutworms, armyworms, pests this season. I mean, I have lost a lot of things to pests this season and I think, and I, I know I've mentioned this before, but I think it has something to do with all the construction that's going on and they're just ripping up everything in the neighborhood. Um, and there's just like a thousand pests, a thousand new pests that found their way into my garden this season. I mean, this has pretty much been the norm, you know, for my tomatoes. I have still gotten a few tomatoes. I won't, I won't say I haven't. You know, we still have been able to make a whole bunch of pasta sauce out of our Roma tomatoes and even some of our cherry tomatoes. Um, but at the end of the day, like, Last season, I got like 50 or 60 pounds worth of tomatoes off of the same amount of plants that I currently have. And this season just has been a bust on the tomatoes. The same thing happened with my kale. I will show you guys. Oh my God, look. So this is where my kale patch was. I don't know if you remember, I had a beautiful amount of kale and it was just completely covered in kale. These are the three little baby plants that are left. You get one over there too. And then, but maybe we have four. Um, but even these, you can see the bugs and the pests and everything. I mean, I have put down diatomaceous earth, BT. It has just been crazy this season with the number of pests. All of this was kale. You can see all of this is dead kale. I mean, I ripped up most of it, but right now I'm just kind of like letting it decompose back into the soil. This entire thing was covered in kale. I mean, how crazy is that? So part of that is just life in the garden, right? There's sometimes that you're just not ever gonna be able to prevent um, the number of pests that come um, at you in your garden. It's, it's just gonna happen. Another part of that, I will admit, is that I got a little bit lazy. Um, I do take my garden walks every morning, right? I love being out here in the garden. I love seeing all the flowers, but sometimes I notice stuff like tons of armyworms or cutworms or whatever it is, and I don't do anything about it. And that, I think that probably happens to a lot of gardeners, you know, um, up until something like this happens where your entire kale supply is wiped clean for the season. Now I could go ahead and plant more kale, but the moral of the story is, you know, you really want to be catching these things early. The minute that you see an infestation and hopefully you catch it before the infestation happens because, oh my gosh, um, the minute that you see a whole bunch of armyworms or cutworms or caterpillars or anything else like that, do something about it like go and hand pick those off um put down diatomaceous earth spray neem oil if that's what it calls for whatever it is you know i try to use or all organic pest control methods which of course is a lot harder than just spraying some sort of insecticide from the grocery store you know but at the end of the day like if you don't have the organic ecosystem in the garden like the parasitic insects um, to come in you're gonna have to put down a lot of more pest control um and this season has just just really sucked i mean you guys see I, i'm losing tomatoes i'm losing kale i also lost some of my swiss chard but really this is the importance of taking you know the time on a daily basis to walk the garden and look and see you know what's going wrong what's going right so that you can make mental notes and adjust accordingly and while we're here and there's a flower um i can't get over how pretty this is guys oh my god um, another thing that I really like to do is to hand pollinate anything that needs it. Um, okra, I've never had to hand pollinate. I don't think you, you have to do that with okra. But for example, I have some, some squash, some yellow squash and some zucchini over here. Um, and there is, as you can see, a flower in here. Um, now this is a male flower, um, so you don't really pollinate that one. But if I saw any female flowers, which I don't, then I would take the pollen out of this one and try to hand pollinate as much as possible. Now, I know some of you guys might be asking why I do that, why I hand pollinate you know, plants that are outside. Um, and it's because really we are in an urban environment. We're in suburbia. I'm sure you can hear um, there's like a guy hammering onto some rooftop over there um, first thing in the morning. That happens every single day. And there's not a lot of pollinators out here, right? They, there are some bumblebees there are some very good you know parasitic insects that have come up um, every once in a while i get like a ladybug or two and we do have quite a few wasps in the garden this season but it's not really enough to just pollinate every single thing i'm growing um, and even if there were tons of you know bumblebees and predatorial insects and everything that is good i mean this is my family's food supply for the majority of the season i 
one of my biggest gardening goals is to not have to um, pay for vegetables at the at the supermarket so this is basically it and I want to make sure I'm getting the best harvest possible now I walk the garden every single morning anyway it takes approximately 10 seconds to hand pollinate anything that needs it I mean it's not that much work and if it's really saving those those squash plants or the zucchini plants or whatever it is then to me it's worth it all right and the last thing i do here is i take note of anything that you know is new growth so all of these you can see these are all new growth these are my little cucumelon plants um, now this has been crazy vining just everywhere um, and you can also see there's a lot of dead parts on this plant right there's a lot of dead leaves here and that was from overwatering. Um, I did overwater the heck out of my plants with this new irrigation system. I just completely overestimated the amount of water that they really needed. But since I decided to cut back on the amount of water, you can see all of this new growth. I mean, this is just tons of new little leaves and it's all bright green again. So I'm really happy with the amount of, you know, adjustments I did. And that's really something that you wanna be doing every time that you're in the garden, every time that you're walking around, is you want to look around Hey, look, some flowers. You wanna walk around and you wanna notice anything that's going right, anything that needs you know, some adjustments. I was on my, you know, one of my garden walks in the morning and I noticed all of these dead leaves starting to die out and so I took action and I quickly, quickly tried to you know, mitigate the problem and now you can see it really did pay off because all of this has come back and it is completely, completely green again. And we even have some little baby cucumelons coming out again. And actually, while I was doing that, out of the corner of my eye, I saw a whole bunch of little turkey wax beans that are ready for harvest. So then I'll come through here with my basket and also probably get some of these. Um, I suspect if these ones are ready, they were probably about the same size as the other ones last time. Um, so then I'll come in here and just check for more. Um, yep, and there's a whole bunch more, I think, that are gonna need to be harvested. Um, yeah, we have a whole bunch. Also gonna come in here and harvest some of our basil um, for breakfast. Oops. Yeah, just the tops up of these, which are getting a little tall. Um, I always harvest the tops of them so that they can grow outwards instead of upwards. Coming in here to the garden um, every morning might seem like a chore um, or something that you have to do, you know, but I really enjoy it. I love coming out here and seeing all the flowers. I love um, harvesting all my stuff that didn't grow the day before. You know, it's just a really nice way to start the morning. Um, the last thing I do is I always turn my compost pile, um, which is right here. I take anything um, like kitchen scraps from the day before and I just toss it into the compost pile and then I spin the pile just to aerate it um, and make sure that in a couple months I am still getting nice quality compost. For more gardening videos, check out the video right here and I will see you in the next one. Thanks. <laughs>